This is a very interesting boat. This is a 1998 Windy Grand Mistral 37. There's quite an interesting story to this because this boat was owned by the current owner's father. So he grew up with this. Back in 98, he was actually st still pretty much a child when his father had this, had a lot of happy memories on it. The boat got passed on through the family to him and he wanted to bring this boat right back up to standard. Obviously at 1998, it just had a fair bit of life and it was time to give it a refurbishment. So we're down in Plymouth at SeaTac and they have done the business on this one. And I'm gonna show you what it's all about. And it starts right at the very front. This boat is run in Sweden. They do a lot of mooring bow to the islands and that kind of thing. So one of the things that was fitted was this bow pulpit extension here, the little bow sprit. And what this means is that you can anchor off on the stern. You'll see the anchor for that. You bring the nose in against the rocks on the island that you're visiting and then you can hinge this over and there's a ladder underneath that drops down and allows you to step off the boat. So they did all of this, the framework, the stainless steel supports, all of that to allow that to happen. On the outside of the boat, the one thing you have to say about these windy boats is they are exceptional quality. And so in actual fact, not a massive amount was done in terms of the structure of the boat other than polishing it and refurbishing it. So this blue down here, which looks brand new, is actually original but polished back. It was looking pretty sad, apparently, when they first got hold of the boat, and now it's looking absolutely superb. The only thing they did change on the outside here is this rubbing rail, because these inevitably get bashed over time, and there's not much you can do once they're dented, so that was replaced. There's new sun deck cushions on the front there. I'll show you those. We'll have a little wander around. But yeah, most of the outside of this boat is pretty original. It's when we step into the cockpit and then the cabin that you start to see the big changes. So back here, this teak on here is new, the teak in the cockpit was refurbished. That's the anchor that I was mentioning. So that is how you anchor off at the back of the boat. There's no anchor there at the minute, just an anchor roller. <laughs> but that's where it lives and then the chain goes in through there and there's a winch for it. So that's that fella. What's underneath here? Ah, just a bit of storage, a little bit of a draining locker. There must be a ladder here somewhere, mustn't there? that will be on this side, no doubt. There it is. See, this is very windy. Little gas strut to hold that up. Very nice. Shower there as well, which looks to me like it's a new one. Got fender storage here as well, which is very useful. But as ever, when we get into the soft furnishings, the cockpit, that sort of thing, that's when you really start to see the upgrades. And here, this has all been reupholstered. There's a new table. There's a telescopic leg for the table. There's a new fridge over here. These surfaces are new. And here, this would have been a blue upholstery before. That's been replaced with this sort of know, marble effect, really. These are phone chargers. There's one there, another one over there, and that chap in the corner is a wine cooler. You drop your wine bottle into there and it chills it for you. <laughs> That's fantastic. Even up here, new panels in here, new lighting, that kind of stuff. There's new canopies on here as well. Quite unusual to see a Grand Mistral 37 with the open cockpit. A lot of these went out with an open-backed hardtop, which is very nice and very practical, but I have to say, you can't beat an open boat in my humble opinion. We'll take a quick stroll around the front since we're here and then we'll come back and work our way through. So there's steps up onto the side, they've got a grab handle there which is quite handy. And if we head up here, I do love this curved screen, the way it wraps around here, that's really really nice. And then these are these foredeck cushions. There we go, let's come right up to the bow. We've got hatches over the saloon and the forward cabin, you'll see the inside of those in a moment when we go inside. And right up on the front here, we've got the anchor winch controls under these little traps that fold over so you don't send them off by mistake. The anchor winch itself is just there. And that is that little bow sprit that we were talking about that they've added. So that's that, let's spin on round. Classic old school sports cruiser, isn't it? I like these very much. I could see one of these in my future, actually, I must admit. They're a nice boat, a nice quality, a good sea boat. As I say, the only criticism you can level, it's not a criticism actually, it's just a matter of fact, is the fact they're getting a bit, you know, getting on a little bit now, because these were 90s boats, but <laughs> not this one, as you'll see. This has had a pretty thorough go through. So this is almost like a new 37 gram Mistral, which of course is what Sea Tag do so well. Let's head up to the helm. So we've got to step up here, of course, all of this is re-upholstered. We've got the lift bolsters on here as well. So we can lift those up out of the way. There's new Garmin screens. In fact, this whole section here has been redone in order to get these screens in. 
and it means you've got the modern day uh, navigation, instrumentation, all that kind of stuff, whatever you want there. These little chaps here are <laughs> a thing and another thing. I don't actually know. I'm guessing they're things like depth and speed and that kind of stuff. So normally what you display on those, although of course you can have them on here as well. Um, switch gear along here. We've got the uh, Volvo uh, start-stop controls. And in fact, that's a little bit of a giveaway because you wouldn't have had that on a 98 boat. You'd have had keys. Um, on these, in fact, they do have kind of like keys. What they have is these little tabs that go on your key ring. Um, and it needs those to be in close proximity before it will start. So you can't just have anybody come on and hit the start-stop button and have the engine start. If you haven't got little tabs, they won't work. And then over here, you're seeing the latest Volvo Penta engine controls, the latest Volvo Penta joystick control, and that's rather giving away the fact that it's got a pair of brand spanking new Volvo Penta diesel engines, and I will, of course, show you those. And then we've got trim tab controls down here. And that little chap there is the uh, stern anchor winch control. That's what that is. Love this grub rail they put around here. Whenever you are at this end of the boat, up here in the forward end of the cockpit, this grub rail traces all the way around. Those little black traps down there are demisters for the windscreen, so they are hooked up to the central heating system so that if you've got the canopies up and you're a bit wet and everything's a bit cold and damp, you can keep the windscreen clear. Very, very practical thinking. There is going to be a new compass on here, apparently they can put a black compass on so it matches everything else. So that is the cockpit. It's a nice layout though, isn't it? That works well. The table, of course, folds. I'll show you that actually in a minute when we get the engine hatch up. And then here you've got the door that swings across. This one comes across the top. Obviously it slides out to here to enclose this. And then this is the cabin. <laughs> it's a little bit dark at the minute. Let's find some light switches and light this up for you. Now there's actually three stage lighting in here. The switches are up here and we can have the main lights like that. Or we can have little under lights along here that have been added on both sides. Or we can have the um, the floor lights. If you just want some really subtle lighting, let's put those on and the main lights, shall we? Hang on. Right, let's put them all on. <laughs> there you go. You can't go wrong, can you? Now, here we're getting to the real meat of it because it's not just the upholstery; it's new. All well, these linings are new. The linings down here are new. The head linings new. All this is new. And in fact, if you look over here, there's some quite nice touches because even in here all the linings inside for example that hanging locker and you this has been added which is a coffee machine and this slides out so that you can get to the water filler at the back that's rather lovely fusion stereo in there and then again this is all bits of storage as we go down here, this one is a particularly interesting one because, you see the way this is lined here? Well, that is because the owner of this boat rather likes a drop of rum. So what they've made him is a special custom rum box. Here we go. I'll put it out over here so you can see it properly. Look at this. So this was custom made by SeaTag to fit that gap and to fit a couple of bottles of rum in and a couple of nice serious glasses. And that slots away in that cupboard that we just saw. And just does up with that little buckle. While we're pointing this way, I'll point out the galley. So new uh, hob here, new galley surface here, the lighting we mentioned across the back. Um, this woodwork is original and it looks really nice. So this is what the boat would have had in the first place, except for the fact that there wasn't a door on the fridge. So they've actually managed to match this perfectly and they've put a new fridge in as well. That's rather nifty. And if we come around this way a little bit further, this would have had a big table in originally. They didn't want that. They wanted to get rid of that because they don't eat down here. They just wanted a little table they can drop stuff on. So this has been made. It means it opens out this whole area here. And you see there's a track along there. You can just move that table along the track to wherever you want it. So you want to sit there, move it down here a little bit, sit there with your feet up, whatever. Then you can do. And this floor is very interesting as well because this is not carpet. This is like a sort of a plastic material. In fact, it is reclaimed sea plastic. It's plastic they've got out of the sea and then made into this. The owner of this boat has very young children and they wanted something really practical. And this is that. It means that unlike carpet, it doesn't stain easily. But what they've done then is they have put carpet in the cabins where you want perhaps 
a little bit more comfort for your tootsies when you get out of bed. So if you have a look in here, you can see this has all got new carpets in, new bedding, again, all new linings and so forth. And again, we need to find a light switch. So we've got the lights at the head of the bed there, and then we can have the overhead lights, like so, or we can have the lighting down underneath here. So again, depends what you want. Now another neat thing in here, I mentioned young children. What they've done with this, you'll notice these little fellows up here. And the idea of this, I don't want to mess up the bed too much, but just to show you, is you can just see that netting that's down underneath there and the webbing straps for it. And the idea of that is you can bring that up, it attaches to here, it goes all the way around here, and it makes that into a soft play area where small children can play and mess around and do whatever they want to do without danger of tumbling out of bed or crashing about generally. So that's rather nice. New headboard across there, of course. This is all new, this is all new. These have been relined. This is all new lining on here. And if we come right on around then we've got little bits of storage about the place like this. And we've got that again all nicely relined hanging on. So that's that fella. Let's back out of there. I'm put this back off and leave it as I found it. That's that hatch we saw, obviously, from the deck. So that's an opening hatch there for a bit of ventilation, a bit of light. And the other one we saw is directly above us just here. There we go. It's nice, isn't it? I like the fact they've kept the original woodwork because that was always a windy strong point. But what they've done is they've accented it with just new linings, new door handles, all that kind of stuff. And if we look in here, we will discover Again, this is new. This is new. In fact, this had an inset sink before, and they put a flat thing across here, and then put that new bowl on, new tap, new shower, all that kind of stuff. New loo underneath here. There we go. Very nice. And there's a door there which takes you through, makes that an ensuite for the half cabin. There we go. That's that little chap. Let's close that. Let's switch that one back off. And let's take a look in here. Now, one of the interesting things I've done in here is it's got the usual reading lights on the headboard, but that end of the cabin is actually normally it's a little bit dim because you've only got little light here, or the window, I should say, rather on this side. So what they've done is they brought the headboard forward slightly, which allows them to put lighting in there. Look at that. And that brightens that whole area up by obviously having the lighting that is concealed, but just lights up that end. And in fact, it does underneath here as well. So it just brightens the whole cabin up. And then you've also got the overhead lights then, which are on the right one. There we go. Those fellows. So a little hanging locker in here. Again, that's all been relined inside. That's the other side of that door that we saw from the heads. And yeah, that makes for a nice cabin. In fact, this used to be two singles in here. And they've converted that and made it into a big double because that's what they wanted. They put USB sockets down there by the bed. See them better if I do that, probably. There we go. And that's made that a rather nice cabin, hasn't it? You've got obviously the headroom that drops because you're back underneath the cockpit here, but nice big usable space. And at this end, then you've got the full standing headroom for getting changed or whatever else you want to do. Very good. Switch panels in here as well, circuit breakers, all that kind of stuff is here. Battery monitor and so forth. Right, let's turn them fellas back off. And we'll head out and talk about the oily bits. So if we come back here, well, the first thing we've got is a really nice storage area underneath the floor. So canopies, all that kind of stuff lives in there. Apparently I say all that kind of stuff far too often. It's become, <laughs> it's become like a reaction now. Can't help myself. But yeah, that's the canopies in there. I mentioned new canopies, as you can see. And then the lift for the, um, for the engine hatch, what we need to do, in fact, is move that bowl, otherwise it'll go a burton, go for a burton even. Well, that needs to 
fold up? I'm not sure, but they fold. I'll show you anyway. There we go. These lovely hinges on here. They fold in like that. There we go. And then what we do need to do is just move that one up out of the way. Which is a lot easier if you are have two hands free and not holding a GoPro. And that one needs to just move up out of the way as well. In fact, let's put them up here. There we go. And then, you know, the magic of electricery, engine hatch. Where are we? Hatch lift. There we go. Now, of course, it's all very well refurbishing a 1998 boat, but you're left, in theory at least, with the original old engines. Well, not in this one, because <laughs> these were done too. So this would have had a pair of Volvo Penta KAD 42s, I would imagine. It might have been 43s, I'm not certain, but my guess would be KAD 42s, 230 horsepower each. These have had a pretty serious upgrade because this has now got a pair of D4 300s. So they're talking about a top speed of 35 knots with this, and I would imagine it does every inch of that, if not more, because those are big, meaty engines for this boat. So cruising, therefore, well, mid-20s is very comfortable, and range on this kind of boat, I don't know for sure, but <laughs> a fair guess is usually 250 miles at planing speeds. This has all been repainted down in here, so of course while the engines are out, it was the perfect opportunity to refurbish the bilges. Um, batteries are down here as well, they're positioned down there. Pretty sure that's the heating system over there. And that will be the power trim um, pumps for the uh, outdrives, which are also new. So mechanically, she is bang up to date. And that's what we saw at the helm with the new joystick control, the new throttles, all that kind of stuff, all linked to these lovely brand spanking new engines. So this boat really has got a full new lease of life. I mean, it's almost like having a new boat. There would still be warranties on these engines, well, obviously, because they're brand spanking new. Fantastic. Let's drop that one back down. Like those engines, got a D4 on my boat. Oh, nice. There's a switch gone. Here it is. And that, my friends, as we like to say, is about the size of that. I'm going to step back off onto the pontoon so we can have a last lingering look at this. There we go. That is a good looking boat, isn't it? I like these very much indeed. Massive thanks to SeaTac for organising that tour for us. Always a pleasure to see what these guys have been up to. Massive thanks also to the owner, because I understand he's a fan of Aquaholic. So love your boat. Thank you very much for allowing us to bring it to the Aquaholic audience. And talking of which, let me know what you think of this one, guys, in the comments. And we will catch you on another one of these very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.